Hey guys, and welcome to episode 12 of the How to Code a Spigot plugin for 1.15 slash 1.16 series. I said last episode that I'll go over custom configs, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this episode. So I'm going to show you real quick what I mean by a custom config. So, um, actually, I'll show you right here. I'm opening it up. So a custom config to me is not a config.yml. You see, I have a data.yml here. And what this data to YML does, it is gonna hold some player data. And typically when you hold player data, you wanna hold the uh, UUID of the player and set the player name. So what the plugin is that we will be creating is one where we mine a diamond ore. It's gonna save how many diamond ores we mine in total in this file. It's a really easy plugin. It's really main to show you guys how to create custom files. So um, real quick, preview to the next episode I'm gonna create a pickaxe and whenever I mine this diamond ore you'll see it works normally and I'm gonna get 18 there if I keep mining 19 20 21 if I go back into my file I'll update it real quick so yes and I get boom the amount I mined 22, 23, 24, 24. And just like that, that's how our plugin's gonna work. So let's get right into creating the actual file itself. And I got a lot of diamonds here. Oh God, it's Fortune 100. Uh, so let's, uh, let's take it out of my game and uh, let's go into creating the plugin. So the first thing we were gonna wanna do is create that project. So I'm gonna right click on the package explorer, go to Java project, and I'm gonna name this, I don't know, diamond counter. Go to next. I'm gonna go to the libraries up here, go to add external jars. I'm gonna add in our 1.15 download or 1.16, whatever you're using. And go ahead, open up that folder, the uh, project, go to SRC, right click, go to new package. I'm gonna name my package me.coderred dot diamond counter and if you have a website you can do com dot your website name dot the name of the project once we have that package created go ahead right click go to new class we're gonna name that class main and then inside the class we're gonna do the extends java plugin and then we're also going to create the on enable and on disable so plugin void on enable public void on disable and i promise i'm not this bad of a typer <laughs> i use a different keyboard when i record so you guys don't hear all the loud noises i do have a really loud mechanical keyboard all right so now that we have this on enable and on disable created we actually are going to skip out on the main file for now and we're going to create a new class file and now to do this, I usually create a new package itself and I, cause I usually have more than one file. Uh, we can go ahead and do that. So we're gonna create another package, go to new package and name this package the same, similar to your first package, me.coderred.diamond, there's a counter. And then you do dot and this package is gonna hold all our files. So we're just, I'm gonna name it dot files. So we're only gonna put file classes in here. Once we have that package created, go ahead and right click on it again, go to new class. And I'm gonna name this class data manager. Now in this data manager, this is where we're gonna create the data.yml. And it is a little bit of code. If you don't really know how to use files, it could be a little confusing. I'll try my best to explain it, but of course, um, I'm not, I'm not saying just go ahead and copy it, but, uh, if you want to copy it, go right ahead. I've been using this code for like five years now and it's been working great for me. I, I usually, when I create plugins, I just copy this code. I don't write it all out. It's a lot to write out, but I do recommend writing out for the first time. So you understand how it works. Really important to know how it works. So then when you're creating other plugins and you want to use something similar to a custom file, you can go ahead and create it because you know how it works. So the first thing we're going to do is create a few privates here. So we're going to create 
a private main plugin. And we're gonna create a private file configuration. And we're gonna name that file configuration data config. Set it equal to null. Next, we're gonna create a private private config file. Set that equal to null. And then go ahead and import all of this. Oh, sorry. Private, not thinking, private file config file. I'm pressing control shift O to automatically import it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna import our main class, not the craft bucket, but our main class. Awesome. Once that is all created, I'm gonna space down here so I can scroll a little bit. And we're gonna create our constructor. So our constructor is gonna look like a public data manager. And what we need in here is a, a reference to our main class. Similar to the constructor we make when creating uh, listeners and stuff, we create this constructor, and all we're gonna do is set this dot plugin, which this dot plugin is referring to this plugin right here. Set that equal to plugin. So we're setting this right here equal to this reference. So when we create the file in our main class, we're gonna pass in the reference of the main class into here, and we're gonna set this equal to our reference. All right. Next. Next, the first thing we actually want to create is the, re the reload config. The reload config is the main point of a config file. So we're to public void reload config. I'm just going to make this method reload config. The first thing you want to do, and probably all these methods we're going to create, is check if they're null. So if this config file equals null, we want to create it then. So I'm gonna space down. I'm not gonna use brackets when I only put one line under our if statement. I just think it looks neater. What am I gonna type in here? I'm gonna type this dot config file equals new file. And inside this, I'm gonna put this plugin dot get data folder, comma, and the name of the folder. I mean name of the file, data.yml. And I'm going to be saying this a lot in this episode <laughs> because we're going to be using a lot of thises. And all that this is going to do is just referencing these values up here. All right. So this config file, which is right here, this file, equals a new file. And we're sending that new file to this plugins folder, data.yml. We're just getting inside that plugin folder that we have right here. We're getting inside this plugin folder. You see uh, episode 12 I have here. Getting inside this folder and we're creating this data.yml. That's all we're doing. Next, once we created the file, we can actually reload it. So this dot data config equals a yam configuration. Configuration. And then we're gonna do dot load config. And the config we're gonna load is the one we just did, this dot config file. So a YML is YAM. It's just the way uh, it's formatted. ML is a different language, a coding language. So we're setting this data config, this configuration up here, equal to this YAM load configuration. And when we load the configuration, YAM itself, it's gonna go through and it's gonna check for uh, parser errors and stuff. Uh, there's nothing really we can catch here, but it's gonna go ahead and check for all the errors. So once it's loaded, once we have these values done, we need to do one more thing and that's just create an input stream real quick. So input stream equals a default stream. I mean, I mean I'm naming it default stream. It equals this dot plugin dot get resource. And the resource is the data dot YML. Go ahead and import input stream and that is just the IO. Now most of the imports we're going to be using is just the uh, IO right, right up here. And then there's going to be two bucket ones and these are the two bucket ones we're going to be importing but everything else will be IO. Alright. Now that we had created this input stream we need to check if it's null. Oh if it's not null sorry. If it's yeah. So if default stream is not equal to null then we wanna go ahead and load that input string. 
Uh, so we're going to do yam configuration. And we're set that default config. We'll name it default config. Set equal to yam configuration. We'll do a load again, dot load configuration. But inside here, it's not a file. It's got to be a reader. And the reader is going to be a new input stream reader. Oh, reader. And inside here, the reader will be the default stream that we just created right above. There we go. Sorry, I don't really, like I said, I don't really type all this out usually. Uh, kind of just copy and paste, edit the file name. Because if I did, I'll be typing a lot of stuff. All right, go ahead and import that. It's an IO. And now we can move on to the next line. And the next line, all we're doing is this.dataconfig.setdefaults to default config. All right. So what are we saying here? So if this is not null, meaning there is a resource data.yml, go ahead and we're just gonna set that input string here. We're setting the defaults and stuff. It's just a way to for the YAM to read itself and to read everything in there. And as uh, input stream is values, how do I explain this? So we're getting the values from a file and we're using those values. An output stream will be us going into the files and outputting information to a file. Input is taking it out. But we're just going to be dealing with input. So we're just taking the value from the YML and we're using it in our code. All right. Hope that made sense. <laughs> we're going to create another method. And this method to be the main method you're really going to be using all the time. And that is the get config. Configuration. Get config. And very simple stuff in here. All we're gonna type, actually we're type a little more, but we're gonna type in return this dot data config. So for get config, all we really wanna return is the data config. It's this data config up here, the config, uh, file configuration. But before we can return it, like I said, every, if, every method we're gonna need to check if it's null. And if it's null, we can go ahead and just reload it. And we can reload it because if it's null, our reload config method has it creating it right here. We have it creating it. So if it's null, go ahead and create it and then go ahead and get it. Nice and easy. All right. Next is the main thing we'll be using for saving it. So when we set stuff into the data.yml, we actually need to save stuff. And for that, we're going to do plugin void save config. And once again, we need to check for null. So uh, if this dot data config equals null, or if this dot config file equals null, go ahead and just return. So if it's null, that means it's empty. There's not, there's not, it doesn't even mean it's empty. There's like, there's no file. So if there's no file, we don't need to save nothing to nothing, so I just return. And then next, we are going to say this dot get config dot save. And what file are we saving? Well, we're saving this dot config file. And I type in this, I could just type in config file too, but I type in this so I can do like this dot and see everything. Um, but yeah. You're gonna get this red underline. And why are we getting this red underline? Well, just hover over it and you'll see we need to add a try and catch. So go ahead and add in that try and catch real quick and it'll auto generate this for us. Uh, let's get rid of this stuff in here and we're gonna write our own thing here. I'm actually doing something pretty cool. So I'm gonna say this.plugin. And like I said, this is just like, I don't even, I don't need to type this. I can say plugin dot, plugin dot get loader dot log. And log is oh, not loggable. Log. Log is pretty cool. You do a lot of stuff with log. And what I think is really cool is you can do levels. So level.servere. And we'll say a message like could not, uh, could not save 
config to space and we'll say this dot config file comma e so in the console i don't have any severes in my console but uh i do have infos you'll see info warn just some warns here but yeah there's no severes but it will show a severe level in your console if there if there's a problem saving it and i'll just say a message could not save file to the whatever data.yml all right next save config is done so the last thing we need to do is public void save default config and the default config is really just initializing the config file that's the way i like to look at it and of course the first thing we need to do is this dot config file equals null we want to go ahead and create that config file so this config file equals new file just like we did up above we're going to create it dot get data folder data dot ymail so if the file doesn't exist let's go ahead and create it like i said this is like our initializer so this is what we're going to do every single time we uh, start the server we're going to initialize it using save default config and then next we're going to say if this dot config file dot exists. So I'm saying if it doesn't exist, why are you putting that exclamation point there? So if this doesn't exist, go ahead and type in this dot plugin dot save resource dot save resource. And the resource we are going to save is the data dot YML and we're just put false. We're not really replacing anything. If it doesn't exist, we're not replacing anything. And then last but not least, go up to the constructor and type in save default config. And like I said, this is save slash initializes the config. And I spelled that wrong. All right. So um, let's go over it real quick before we move on. And reload config basically it's going to create the config if it doesn't in, if it's no config and it's going to check for all the YML issues on the praiser, make sure everything has a comp with everything has a quote that has an end quote and stuff like that. So check for spacing errors, everything. And it's going to reload it and then it's going to save it. Next, the get config is just going to get it. So this is a, like the last episode when we said get Boolean. This is how we're going to use it. We're going to say data dot get config dot get Boolean, whatever. Save config, this is what you're going to use when you add stuff to the file. So when you set stuff to the YML file, you want to use save config to save that YML file. Warning, this will get rid of comments. But uh, typically, you don't want people to edit the uh, data file through through the file. So really, no one should be inside that YML, just your code. Next is the initializer. It's just going to initialize the file. That's the way I look, like to look at it. All right, we are almost done. Go ahead, hop back into your main class and in your on enable, actually above your on enable, we're going to create a public, a public data manager. And I'm going to name it data. Go ahead, import data manager. And then in the on enable, we're going to say this dot data equals new data manager this we're going to pass in this to the constructor so now with right here with this in there we can go ahead and use data and uh how do we use it is data dot get config dot get boolean whatever just like in the last episode that's how you use it uh, just add one more thing you're just adding in that instance of the data and uh you can use this file like not just for data ymls i mean i have plugins that have like five different files i don't even use the last episode the config file i create it through here i'm going to type, make these all config and that's how i create my config files but it's up to you whatever's easier for you but like i said you can use this code for any type of file you want to make next let's go ahead and create the actual code for the uh mining the block i guess and uh we'll implement listener at the top import listener and 
at event handler, public void on block break, I guess. And the event is bl block break event, pretty sure. Event, go ahead and import all of that. What's wrong with this? Oh, I spilled, I spilled it wrong, okay. And then the first thing we wanna check is if the event dot get block dot get type the material type dot equals and our material we're using is the diamond ore. So if the block that's breaking is diamond ore, go ahead and we're gonna save that thing. We're gonna save that number to the file. And uh, first thing I wanna do is do player player equals event dot get player. Next, I'm gonna create an int called amount. I'm gonna initialize it to zero. Import player. Scroll down for y'all. All right, now this is the main point. Now, what if they already have an amount? So I already have an amount in my file. I have 24. So I wanna get that 24 and I wanna add one to it. But before I can just add one to that 24, I have to make sure they actually have that 24 in there. What if a player has nothing? They don't have a file and I'm trying to get something from it, I'm gonna get a null error. So the first thing I wanna do is check. So I'm gonna say this dot data dot get config dot contains. So I wanna check if it contains. And right here is just the path I chose to do a path doing players dot the UUID and then the total. You can do whatever you want. You can just do the UID and then the total. But I'm gonna do players dot plus player dot get unique ID dot two string. And then I'm gonna do another plus and say dot total. And yeah. So we're just checking if our file contains this and if it does go ahead and set amount equal to what we just did up here so I'm gonna just copy this and change the contains to dot get int alright so if they have some total if they actually are in the file go ahead and get that number and set it to the amount and then next, uh, you can do it here if you wanted to, amount plus plus, whatever. I'll do it later on. Next, we're going to say this dot data. And again, this is just referring to this class. I can say data dot get config and then do dot set. And inside this set, so this would be the path right here. This first argument is the path. And the second argument is what we're setting it to, the, what we're setting that path to. So the path is going to be players dot plus player dot get unique ID dot two string plus uh, dot total. Right, players, players, yep. And then what are we saying this? We're saying it to the amount and not just the amount, the amount plus one. We're going to add one to the amount. And then finally, last but not least, this is very important. Uh, <laughs> I always get this error in my code. I don't know why I always forget to save the config and it bothers me so much. I always go back and I'm like, what is wrong with my code? And it's because I'm not doing data.save config. Really important. Make sure you're saving it. after you set something, go ahead and just save it. And just like that, uh, we should be almost done. We'll go up to the on enable type in this dot get server dot get plugin manager dot register events. And register the events of this this we're just register, registering the events of this class and we are done let's add that plugin.yml click on the src get a new file plugin.yml go ahead click on src again go to new file data.yml Inside the plugin.yml, we're type in main, and our main is me dot code red dot diamond counter dot main. I don't know if we used multiple packages before in my past episodes, but uh, 
As you can see, I'm referring to the main class, which is in this package, not this package. So uh, me.coderet diamond counter dot main. And not, not that, not that. Counter, there we go. And the next, uh, the name of the project is diamond counter. The version is 1.0. The author is yourself. And that's it. Let's go ahead and import this to my server. I'm going to name it uh, episode this is 12 because I already have it in my server. There we go. All right, now in the server, let's go ahead and so I have an empty file here right now. If I mine a diamond ore, Go ahead and check that file. Where is it? Diamond counter. If I check that file, you'll see I have one. If I go ahead and mine that order again, two more times, update my file, I have three. So it's working perfectly fine. I hope that made sense to you guys. I will have all the code in the description below in my GitHub go ahead and check out that file like i said i do recommend you guys coding it yourself for the first time and then if you want go ahead and just copy it again and again because if you're like me you're gonna be using a lot of different custom yml's thank you guys for watching i do hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll see you guys next episode for custom recipes like i showed you guys when i created this pickaxe a custom recipe item thank you guys see ya.